Hey everyone, so today we're having a look at a place called Mumsnet. Yay! Some would call it the pit of transphobia. They do definitely have some interesting discussions on trans issues, to say the least. We're just going to focus on comments about Butterfly, which is a beautiful, heartwarming show. It's a three-part series, and it's a drama about a young child who comes out to the family as trans, as a trans girl. And there's been some interesting comments from very concerned mums. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't mind people being genuinely concerned about things, but this is just new level concern. This is like conspiracy level concern. <laughs> yeah, well, we've had uh, run-ins with mums in it in the past, um, but yeah, uh, we had the pleasure of being able to see it before it came out. It aired last night, and I think the hashtag butterfly and butterfly effect went viral on Twitter. Yeah, so let's check it out. To the depth of hell, yes. mums in it. Are we meant to think that pink clothes and pretty hair grips are innately female? Or that he's drawn to these things because he identifies as female? The message is that pink plus sparkles equals girl. It's actually incredibly difficult to write a story that doesn't use these cliches. Because people often define themselves by what they're not. And, you know, for me, obviously I was a tomboy, or seen as a tomboy, but mm -hmm. it was more than that. It was day in, day out, I just felt disconnected. Yeah. If you don't innately identify with a group, whether that's as a girl or a boy, you will seek out things that you identify with. And for this character, and for a lot of trans people, that's often identifying with another gender, or identifying with things that aren't stereotypically what you're supposed to like. We forget that cis kids play into these stereotypes. Like, the reason why these stereotypes exist is because we as a society have created them, and we've said, these are girl things, these are boy things. So if you're a five-year-old kid and somebody says, these are girl things, and you are more identifying as a girl, of course you're going to gravitate towards what people see as girl things. Yeah, because it's your only way to express yourself. Yeah. I'm watching, so far, all glittery pink and cute curly lettering as expected. What the fuck was that mermaid about? In the first episode, there's a scene with a mermaid, they've gone to the aquarium and there's a mermaid inside the aquarium that only the trans girl seems to recognize. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, butterflies and mermaids are very symbolic. Um, a lot of trans children really connect with the idea of the transformation that a butterfly can have and also the mystery of the mermaid. Yeah. What was the, what's the mermaid appeal? It's because mermaids don't, uh, aren't necessarily seen as having genitals and they're not seen as having body parts which a lot of trans people feel distressed about. Mm -hmm. So for trans feminine people and trans girl in particular, being a mermaid is escaping this constant gendering and sexing of your body. He won't go to the boys' toilets. He'd rather wet himself. I don't buy it. Well, I hate to tell you that this is a reality for a lot of trans people. And if you actually knew any trans people, I'm pretty sure you would know that a lot of trans people and trans kids have been in the situation of being afraid and feeling so incredibly distressed and uncomfortable about going to certain bathrooms. And maybe having an accident because they can't make it to the bathroom in time. I mean, I've heard stories of that too, where people just feel so distressed that they end up... It's just like there's such lack of empathy with these people. Like this person's <laughs> well, like, I don't buy it. Well, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Well, it doesn't matter if you don't buy it. It's an actual reality. I'm actually feeling angry at the blatant propaganda and manipulation here and fucking mermaids tweeting every five seconds about their helpline. Oh yeah, so terrible that mermaids that helps people in need tweets details about their helpline so they can help people in need. What a terrible, manipulative thing to do. Mm -hmm, truly, know. truly sinister. So tragic it? that they're trying to help young people. I know, so tragic that they're just, you know, trying to help friends and, and families and, and kids who really need help. I noticed she mentioned shopping in Topshop. Great. Okay, let's move on. Well, this boy is certainly disturbed. Not sure puberty blockers and surgery should be the first resort, though. Does it seem like that's the first resort? In the episode, they even say that the kid has been doing this for a long time. Like, th they've been taking different measures to try to deal with it. Yeah. And the parents even broke up as a part of the process. And, and well, <laughs> this boy is certainly disturbed. Well, this person is disturbed because you're calling them a boy, first of all. And... <laughs> And because they're not seen as the girl that they are. The only one who's disturbed here is people who have no empathy for the struggles of other people. Exactly. Okay, irresponsible idiots. I cannot believe they showed a scene where an 11-year-old boy slashed his wrists. Samaritans need to find their spine and condemn this awful display of manipulative, harmful propaganda. Yikes. 
Wow, <laughs> lots to unpack here. This is an actual reality that trans kids are attempting suicide and we need to be able to talk about it as a society because it's a real problem. It's a real thing. You know, almost is it almost one in two young people will actually attempt to take their own life. I'm a statistic too. I attempt to take my life at 11, so I don't think this is too young or outrageous to show this sort of plot line because this is the reality for a lot of young people. And certainly for trans youth in particular because there's research after research yeah. after research that shows that trans people in general have higher suicide rates than the general population. And that's a fact. If you don't believe me, Google trans and suicide. You will get research after research after research showing you this. So this is a reality that many people have experienced themselves and a reality that we're seeing right now. I'm kicking myself that I didn't do a bingo card. Mind you, I'd have a full house in the first 30 minutes. That's what I think whenever I see an episode or something about trans people, because it's usually made by people who aren't trans. Exactly. And they actually play into all these stereotypes. Whereas this show is a lot better in many aspects. Of course, it plays with the stereotypes because we as a society need certain things to be able to, to correct, to connect the dots. To connect the dots with people, yeah. exactly. The the trans narrative for young people is actually very, very similar. You know, you, you have issues, you come out to your parents, your parents don't understand trans issues. They learn about that. They have their own, you know, cr uh, crisis or transition that they go through themselves. And a young person hopefully gets supported before or around the time they hit puberty, the wrong puberty. Isn't this going against all sensible advice on not publishing suicidal ideation? Has this person ever watched TV? <laughs> I mean, there's so many different shows on TV about suicide, about murder, about all of these things. Have these people ever complained that there's a crime show on TV? Probably not. No. That escalated quickly. He finds his uniform itchy. Could be a sign of autism. <laughs> I just love that <laughs> these people are diagnosing a fictional character uh -huh. in a drama on ITV. What's going on here? Like, honestly, if anybody's playing by stereotypes, it's these people. It's very odd. I really thought that they would try and come up with some sort of proper reasoning. So far to me, it is screaming out that this kid needs some serious help. Not that he is innately trans. It's a fictional, it's written as trans. Like the character is trans, whether these people want to believe it or not. Yeah, <laughs> that's what the show's about. I cannot believe that a GP would suggest gender dysphoria and blockers on a first appointment without having even seen the child. Um, they have seen the child. <laughs> One. Does this person watch the episode? First of all, this episode can never truly give you the whole process that people go through. They only have like an hour or 30 minutes for each episode so of course they're gonna have to pack a lot of information and they can't show you the entire process and the years and years that have led up to this point and they can't show you all the nuances and all conversations but that the they, parents are gonna have it's not a documentary they do try and suggest that though that this has been going on for a very very long time and this is why uh, the parents split up because it's a tough situation to deal with it's actually something which so it's not just getting blockers on the first appointment it just doesn't even happen like that it's getting almost unwatchable. I could have been watching The Cry if I didn't already know the ending. Well, sorry to disappoint you and to not have something decent for you to watch that evening that's going to support your bizarre agenda. You don't have to watch it. If you did watch it or continue watching it, you might understand what young trans people are going through and what families with young trans people have to deal with. Now the mother is saying that she wanted a girl. For fuck's sake, these red, there are red flags all over the place. In the scene that the mother mentions that she wants a girl is because she's starting to blame herself for the kid being trans. She was contemplating whether she could have somehow changed the hormonal balance by thinking she wanted a girl. Yeah, she was blaming herself at that point, of course. So this isn't about the mother wanting a girl and her being like, oh my god, this is the best thing in the world, I'm not going to get a girl. Like, anybody who watches that episode can see that that's clearly not what's happening here. They show the father being sensible about blockers and abusive at the same time. That's really sad. I'm sorry, but sensible <laughs> and abusive does not go together. So he's just being abusive. He's just abusive. <laughs> and he's that character in the film that is struggling to deal with things. That's what he represents as that character. And hopefully we're going to see his character change over time where he comes to, to grips with what actually is going on and the fact that he does have a trans child. If anybody finds his behavior reasonable <laughs> on this episode, they have literally zero empathy for kids. 
Like they do have no empathy for this little girl who is just trying to be herself. If he cannot stop being abusive in a conversation about hormone blockers, he has a real issue. He really does. He's got lots of issues going on. Like nobody's day. prescribing the kid hormones right there and there. This is the first time someone mentions it to him and yeah. he becomes very aggressively abusive. Yeah. And not to mention he already hit his child. Yeah, we actually see him hit his child. So he's got a long journey to go on and a lot of apologizing to do. How many kids are going to watch this and start thinking that they're trans? Girls that don't like pink and glitter, for instance. No, they're not. The only people who are going to relate to this and identify with the characters are people who actually are trans. That's right. It's not going to influence someone to be trans. Just like if you see a gay <laughs> character on TV, you're not going to influence kids to be gay. Yeah, newsflash, you can't make anyone trans. It just doesn't work that way. This is horrendous. And the dad wallops him when he's wearing a skirt and dancing. No reason at all this wee boy might think he's a girl. None at all. That's just really bizarre. It's like the child is literally just being an innocent child and wanting to play and the dad gets upset and hits the child. How could you interpret that in any other way? I don't understand. I, I just don't understand the comment. <laughs> I just literally don't understand the comment. I can't believe that the TRAs, the trans rights activists, think this is good. Boy likes sparkles slash pink. Father beats boy for liking sparkles slash pink. Mother wanted a girl, not another boy. Parents go through a divorce. Self-harming, isolated 11-year-old. Boy hates his penis. That's a beautiful poem. Is it a poem or just a poorly structured sentence? Hmm. Why the fuck would anyone's immediate thought be that the boy is actually a girl? <laughs> Why the fuck would a GP suggest puberty blockers? <laughs> I'd Why on, wouldn't you think that? I'd be on the phone to social services and getting that poor kid some counselling. Well, I'm pretty sure that counselling would lead you to the thought that this kid might be trans. Shock. Wow, such a shocker, really. It wasn't actually their first thought, no. and it took them a long time to get to that point. Yeah, it wasn't actually anyone's first thought, and when <laughs> kids start to to show some sort of behavior that isn't gender conforming, people's first thoughts aren't that they're trans. People's first thoughts are, oh, you know, maybe they just like these things for no particular reason. Or maybe they're gay. Maybe they're gay, or maybe they just like cars more than this. And people's immediate thought isn't that their kids are trans because most parents are probably afraid yeah. of the prospect that their kids are trans and because the they're going to have a pretty tough life. That's right. But we can help them and they can actually support them by giving them the support they need. Yeah. And that's why the GP is perhaps suggesting and asking the question whether this could potentially be what's happening. Discussing this idea isn't going to do anything. It isn't going to make anyone trans. They're not going to no. magically ship someone off to get hormones and surgery at the age of six. You know, it, it, <laughs> it doesn't just happen. doesn't happen. And now we have a child watching Jazz Jennings and realizing his true self. I don't quite understand. But it is a reality for a lot of trans people because we don't see ourselves depicted in film or in popular media. Ever. That we go to YouTube, we go to Tumblr, we go to Instagram. And we find our people. And we find people like us. It's literally how people find a community. And that's how you recognize <laughs> who you are, by looking at other people who are similar to you, who are further down the path than you. And that's what LGBT people do in general, and a lot of yeah. people who belong to different minorities. And it doesn't mean that someone's somehow being recruited by watching a YouTube video. You find your community because that's what you need in order to survive. I just feel amazed that I have to say this, but you cannot influence someone to be something they are not. I thought we already went through this with gay people about 20 years ago, but it seems that we're still there. Yeah, and all he wants to do is dance. Well, all I sometimes want to do is dance. That's right, it's okay to dance. Didn't Jazz think they were gay in a past life? Didn't Jazz get emotional at not being accepted as gay during past life regression hypnosis? Oh my god, I just love these conspiracy theories that they say. They just take words that oh. somebody has said in some video, take it completely out of context, and then use it to justify their own bigotry. <laughs> Obviously, gender and sexuality are different things. And we, we find something, we try it on, see if it works. If it doesn't work, we move on. Didn't Jess think they were gay in a past life? <laughs> so what? If people believe in past lives, and people believe that you were different people in past lives, surely we were very different people than to what we are right now. Yeah. So just because Jazz was gay in a past life, oh, does that mean she's not trans today? Like, I don't understand the reasoning here. Yeah, I don't, I don't get the logic. 
Sony says only black actor so far is a bully. Now, this is one minor complaint about Butterfly, which is it it's centered around a white family. And I think that in this day and age, we could have seen a variation of some sort within the family. Maybe a yeah. mixed race family would be cool. Yeah. And there is another black character who's actually the mum's friend. Yeah. But I definitely agree that diversity is a problem in films in general. Yeah. And there definitely could be more diversity in this one. But there already is a lot more diversity in this one than in a lot of mainstream films. Yeah, this is true. Very true. All the schoolgirls wearing skirts from what I've seen. More stereotyping, yeah. Um, I hate to tell you, but in the most part of the UK, there are school uniforms and girls are made to wear skirts. Yeah, this right. is something that we as a society enforce, not this episode. Uh -huh. I don't know if you're aware of how the school system works in the UK. I agree that it's absolutely ridiculous because uh, in Iceland, we don't have this. Yeah. I had to wear a skirt and tights for five years and it was incredibly traumatizing. I think kids should be able to decide Choose. what they want to wear. Even if there's a uniform, they should still be allowed to decide which type of clothing they want to wear within reason. That is happening more and more often. We are mm -hmm. seeing schools saying, this is the school uniform, you can pick and choose from it. Yeah. It's not necessarily girls' skirts or boys' trousers. No. Do what you like, but you know. And sympathy vote shocker for the end with no challenge from the mom. I'm really sorry that this is the first time that you've been forced to empath like to <laughs> empathize with trans people uh -huh. and that this seems to be new territory for you but regular people empathize with other people especially when people are struggling to be themselves That's so just because this is the first time for you where you've kind of been forced to watch something trans it's okay so max doesn't think he's gay wonder if he'll be attracted to men or women when he's older I thought almost all trans girls or diagnosed as children turn out to be attracted to men. Why are you thinking about what or who they're going to be attracted to in the future? This is ridiculous. And what is this opinion based on that the majority of trans girls are attracted to men? Yeah, where does that come from? That's, that's really... There are... People can be all sorts of sexualities. They can be straight, bi... Pan, Pan, asexual, asexual. Like, there's so many different things that people can be and actually trans people I would say from my own personal experience which is because there isn't any research about no. this there isn't any numbers there's no survey where trans people are called and say hi are you gay or straight from my experience trans people in general are a lot more queer in many ways and they're a lot more LGBT and they're a lot more fluid in their sexuality exactly. and their sexual orientation. Exactly, they're much more open about things. Which so, is... this annoying stereotypes that trans people are always just straight or they're always just attracted to a certain gender, it's just another stereotype that people who are complaining about stereotypes are enforcing. What's wrong with being a gay boy? Jess, do kids really think it's a big deal when in reality most trans kids are gay? Why are you generalizing that most trans kids are gay? Most trans kids are just trans kids. Yeah, and most kids are just trans. You can be both trans and gay. I don't know if you knew that, but that's an actual reality because being trans is about who you are and being gay is about your sexual orientation. I want to know where all the trans kids were when I was at school. Why now and why so many? I started secondary in 1996 and there were 1200 kids at that school. I have a theory, and that is instead of being trans, all the kids with problems, be it family breakdown, autism, confusion about sexuality, whatever, were anorexic, self-harming, smoking, drinking, it just looks like a new way of lashing out and taking control to me. If we want to talk about generalizing, this is perhaps one of the biggest generalizing I've ever heard about trans kids. And this I, isn't a way of lashing out, this is a way of expressing yourself. I don't understand their reasoning, it just seems very bizarre. Who cares that you started secondary in 96 and there were 1200 kids at your school? Statistically, actually... There are probably a lot of trans kids in your school, but they probably didn't want to talk to you because you kind of sound <laughs> like a dick. <laughs> We equate the rise in trans people to being left-handed, for example, which is what I am. And there, statistically, there's a spike in left-handedness in recent years. But it's actually because in other generations, you weren't allowed to be left-handed. You had your, your hand beaten, you're forced to write with your right hand because it was the devil's hand. I mean, I think it's the rise of sodomy, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, clearly. there's no other reasonable explanation as to why people would be left-handed other than sodomy. I wanted to be a boy, late 70s, early 80s, due to thinking boys got to do better things, and also probably an abusive family life. I just grew out of it because 
trans wasn't an option. Okay, I newsflash. Hate to, I hate to tell you, but you're not trans. Yeah, you're not trans. If it's not in day in, day out, <laughs> and it's not really, really affecting your life, then you're not trans. You can't just grow out of being trans. Just like you can't grow out of being gay, or you can grow out of being straight. Like, and that's not how it works. Exactly. And sadly, we don't live in an equal society, and this is what the, they're talking about. They're saying, boys got to do better things according to them. So I guess boys got more freedom, and, and so on. I feel like we've had a lot of news flashes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's all the same rubbish. I comments. wanted to be a boy too. My brother got bigger proportions, foods, first dips at seconds of cake, and much better birthday presents than I got. Three pairs of itchy bobbly nylon pants isn't suit isn't a suitable birthday present for a girl of seven. Just saying. Well, that's because we live in an unequal society and boys generally get more opportunities and are given things. But this is kind of sounds like your parents were favoring your brother over you which is really, I'm sorry. really sad yeah i'm sorry that happened to you and nobody should have to get three pairs of itchy pants for a birthday present but know? what does that have to do with trans people yeah okay. when i was in secondary school starting in the 80s we had male goths who got to wear makeup and a few girls who wore doc martens and men's clothes and cut their hair short none of them grew up to be trans there was never any suggestion that they were trapped in the wrong body cool great great Probably for you. because they weren't trans and they didn't actually experience themselves as being trans. Yeah, I guess they weren't trans. I don't know if these people realize <laughs> or understand, but nobody has ever said that putting on a dress makes you a woman no. or that putting on, you know, or cutting yeah. your hair makes you into a boy. Yeah. It's a lot deeper than that. And yeah. anybody who seems to be under this impression has either been misled, haven't done any proper research, and have probably never met a trans person. It's about gender identity, who you are versus gender expression. I feel like I'm constantly saying this, but it's gender so expression is how you choose to express yourself outwardly with clothes, hair, makeup, whatever whatever whereas opposed to your gender and who you feel inside is how you actually identify who you actually are so, so if a girl example. puts on trousers and cuts her hair it doesn't automatically make her into a boy what makes someone into a boy is that they experience themselves as a boy and it's an intrinsic part of who they are so there seems to be a lot of upset about inequality in this thread. I mean, inequality is a real issue in society, but to somehow make trans people responsible for it or make trans people scapegoats of gender equality isn't a reasonable argument against trans people. Of course, trans people are just as susceptible to gender stereotypes as anyone else. Of course. What an absolute pile of wank. Do the trans rights activists really think that this will turn out in their favor? So many indicators to point to other issues that are plain as day to see. Or is it just me? Numpty nuts? It's just you. <laughs> it, it genuinely is just you. And maybe about 20 other people on Mum's Net. Do they think it's going to turn out in their favor? We actually do. Actually, as trans activists, we do think that things are going to turn out in our favor this because is... we are on the right side of history because all we want to do is get on with our lives. We're not trying to hurt anyone. We literally just want to express ourselves and be who we are. This is literally the same thing as when gay people started being depicted authentically on television and in right. drama. It really had a positive effect on people's public opinion yeah. because we digest, we, we digest people from things from the media. We digest content from TV yeah. and it shapes and changes our opinions. So yes, I genuinely do think it's going to have a positive effect. And if you look online, if you look on Twitter, the majority of responses to this are actually really, really positive. Yeah. There's only a handful of journalists who are going on about how we're making suicide seem more, you know, more exaggerated. Than, it is, exaggerated than it is. But personally, I almost hold these people personally accountable uh -huh. for the struggles that trans people are going through because, because they, they are... make other people's daily lives worse by, by printing fear mongering rubbish. Yes. And they just go on about their day trying to downplay the actual issues that trans people go through in their day to day lives. And I just genuinely pity those people. Yeah. I genuinely pity people who spend the majority of their time or their journalistic career advocating against the small minority of people who just want to be themselves. Is that really the hill you want to die on? <laughs> That's everything from us. We could go on and on and on. There's pages and pages of this uh, drivel. We're going to end there uh, because we have to at some point. And we will be back with more analysis of translated content. Thank you so much for watching and we will catch you soon. Bye. Bye.